Your alarm blares at 5 a.m. You rush to prepare breakfast, help your disabled parents get dressed, and make sure your younger siblings go to school. After school, you head to work, where you carry heavy loads of packages and deal with rude customers who treat you badly just for your young age. Walking back home, you're tired, but your footsteps are uh, fast because you have to hurry and make another meal for your family. Again and again. This is an average day for underage children whose guardians have a disability, illness, or mental health issue. We call them youth carers, or at least that's the name our society has so graciously granted to these children. It's also the only thing our society has ever done for them. As we sit here listening to each other's speeches and pitying ourselves for spending such a busy summer for college prep, there are countless young people out there making impossible choices between their own dreams and family survival. A significant portion of the teenage population in the Asia Pacific region live at the edge of a cliff where social and financial burdens brutally push them aside, leaving them breathless and miserable. Youth carers are minorities in desperate need of social spotlight because their basic rights are absolutely undervalued by our society. They receive conspicuously lacking education. Since earning money from medical bills is their top priority, most youth carers decide to take several part-time jobs within their middle school and high school years. This not only means that you do not have any leisure time to spend with your friends or interact with your community, but also means that it becomes extremely difficult for them to attend a college. In fact, less than 30% of the youth carers in South Korea decide to attend a college. This isn't just because they have bad grades. Imagine you're left with the responsibility to take care of your sick mother who is not able to make any kind of profit. You're obviously pushed to the side and forced to get an instant job and support your family financially. Thus, it's not about these people having several things to do like and not being able to manage the personal life with their formal life and their work and so on. These choices do not exist for these people. They do not have the right to choose what they want to do and do not even have the preferences for personal life in the very first place. A 22-year-old youth care told Chungang newspaper of South Korea, we have a different starting point. It's obvious how the society looks at young kids who are undereducated and who are in poverty. The higher quality jobs, those who come from good schools get those jobs, and thus who come from good families. And here's where it gets worse. As time passes, youth carers become adult carers. Now, how does becoming an adult sound like to you? For me personally, I get a little excited because it's quite fun knowing that you're gonna be able to make your own choices and become financially independent and so on. But it's very different for these youth carers who heavily rely on government's funding, which tends to be so much more generous to the underage population. Becoming an adult is a bigger problem because it means that there's a significant deduction in the amount of funding that they can receive as minorities within their society. Now, adult carers are left with the same problem but to solve on their own as mature adults would do so. Time is set to solve everything, but for youth carers, it seems the very opposite. Time, rather, makes it even more difficult for them to climb up the social ladder and pursue a self-oriented life they have never had before. Their responsibilities not only destroy their childhood, but also mingles until their adulthood perpetuating their suffering and fear. And this makes us wonder, why isn't the government doing anything? And why is our society so neglective? And what has caused them to be so alone and so unfortunate? Ironically, this problem's core settles within one of our society's virtues, appreciation. Appreciation? Isn't that a good thing, you may wonder? But young carers are glorified. And as mature and responsible sons and daughters who take care of their sick guardian with such massive responsibilities. 
we might we might like compliment them like oh you're so brave and respectful for your for for you to do such a thing at such a young age the problem is rather than being approached as a welfare target at a legal standard they're regarded as an object of praise or compassion at a moral level by their community this means that we are totally neglecting their actual formal situation why is that such a big deal well, you see, our unsympathetic, trivial understanding of their situation is directly reflected upon the government's action towards them. The government's funding policies and the amount of money that the government could provide to these people. What the government tries to do, usually, is to provide them with some kind of a caregiver service, where someone would visit their home and make sure that everything is working out fine, help them with dishwashing, making money, and making, like, food and so on. So it's like a babysitter. This may seem like some kind of a help to us, but if you think about it, just because someone helps you with dishwashing does not not make you a dishwasher. You're still a dishwasher, but you're just now a better dishwasher. The government's policies are not fundamental solutions to these people's problems. Moreover, the the fact that these people, that these people's actions are considered as a moral well-doing of the children it, itself means that once these kids start valuing their own potential and their own future, this is considered as a sin by our society. How dare you leave your parents and do football that you really want to do? How dare you spend your time doing something that you really want to as your dream or future instead of fulfilling your responsibilities? Such eyes from our own society is exactly what puts them into this hell-like situation. And what are some potential solutions to the crisis? We have to start getting angry. Angry that young shoulders are carrying loans heavier than themselves. Angry that these members of the youth do not even have the right to get angry at their situation. Angry that the government is normalizing their effort and sacrifice and taking it as granted. We have to pressure the government to increase their funds and completely replace the role of these youth carers and instead provide instead of providing superficial support. More, more help could be mandatory educational programs that these kids could attend instead of staying home and doing all of the housework. You cannot expect a child to grow while pressing on their shoulders. Thank you.